Welcome back to the channel. This is Anka Engineering and I'm Herman Wiegman. And today we're going to continue on with the various options for the Jaguar rear differentials. Part of the story today will be focused on rebuilding the OEM limited slip differential that was available in the Jaguar F-Type S models. Alright, let's go rebuild the unit. In a previous episode, uh, we did a teardown on this limited slip differential and we found that it's a problem but the uh, friction material falls off of the, the clutch discs uh, and so that's no bueno and that's going to result in a failed unit or one that just diverts back into an open diff and gives you no real traction advantages. So we're looking to replace these, both the friction discs and the uh, stationary clutch, pack, uh, clutch discs. In its stead, we have this kit that was developed uh, specifically for this application so that we could rebuild these units. Now these friction discs are much better. They're made from a molybdenum ceramic and they're very durable and even the stationary discs feel much more substantial. And so I'm really looking forward to this. And the rebuild kit is about 6 to 8 percent thicker than the discs that we're replacing which were worn. So that's a, that's a typical number you can count on, is that new materials, new discs, will be a little bit thicker than the old worn ones. So this should work out. I also have here the OEM and the Rebuild Kit Belleville washers. Now these washers were very similar. They're both one millimeter thick steel and they have approximately the same dish. But the dish on the OEM worn one is about 9% less than the dish on the Rebuild one. And this gives us an option. Depending upon how stiff we want to make the locking action of the differential, we can go for the deep dish Belleville washer, which will give more pressure, or we can go with the OEM washer, which is a little bit more worn and less dish, maybe less pressure. And we can confirm that by doing what's called a breakaway torque test to see how much uh, pressure is on these clutch pack discs uh, when the unit is assembled. And if it's too much breakaway torque, we can tune that by then going to the weaker or the stronger spring, if it's too much or too little. Okay, so this is a variable we have in the system. Okay, I've put the components in a tray because we'll be adding uh, the synthetic uh, gear oil to the parts uh, as we assemble them so that we don't assemble the unit dry. We'll be doing it wet. The first thing we do is we start with the casing. This casing still has a good bearing on the back side. Uh, I haven't changed that yet, but we'll build the inside of the unit. And we start with the oil ring. This has two grooves in it, if you can see those. And this ring does spin between the casing and here the axle, uh, the axle gear. Now normally the casing and the axle gear are all spinning at the same rate, particularly if you're just driving in a straight line. It's only when you go around corners or do high performance driving, then the casing and the axle might be spinning at different rates. And that's what this ring is for. So let's just move it up a little bit. Next we're going to go with the Belleville washer. It's the dish side up and then we place it dish side down around that ring. Okay. Now the next thing to go on, we're going to put some more lube on these parts here too, is the stationary disc. The Belleville really should be stuck between the casing and a stationary disc. The Belleville washer should never see any spinning motion. That's why it's important to sandwich the Belleville washer between a stationary disc and the housing. You see that this stationary disc slides down in the housing and is always spinning with it. And so the Belleville now is between two stationary objects. And then we go with the clutch disc. I'm going to lube that up a little bit. This clutch disc is really nice. Uh, like I said, it's molybdenum ceramic. It also has grooves in it for uh, 
probably circulating the oil, the lubricant, keep cooling, and uh, maybe even add a viscous uh, effect. All right, here we go. Next one, back to a stationary disc. Now we're going to assemble, uh, loop up the carrier for the differential gears, loop it up nice. This is the one without the notch, the one with the notch. Okay, look at those two is right there, that little notch. I believe that goes towards the top half. And this one here, without the notch, goes in on the carrier side. The axle here with the splined axle shaft. Put some lube on there. Now we have to line up all the gears. I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver to help me along. That goes in nicely. These are both the same. It doesn't really matter which way they go on. They are identical gears, identical shafts. Now we have a few more components before we put the top hat on. And that's this clutch pack here. And the first thing to go on, this is the stationary carrier. The first thing we do is apply, from this side out, we apply the clutch disc first. This is dish side up. Now when assembling uh, the unit and putting the screws in, the top hat and the cover may not be perfectly aligned. So what I do is you look in the back of four holes and make sure that the Belleville washer is seated evenly around all four holes. Sometimes you push it and you feel the Belleville and the oil uh, scraper washer fall into place and that's very important otherwise you're torquing against them and you will not have good alignment. That one looks pretty good. I felt that one fall into place. Now we'll go here and again these four holes and making sure the Belleville is in just the right place. Do it in a pattern to ensure even torque and it's not being kiltered. That's looking pretty good. Bought some axles, removed the axle stubs, and then had a plate which accepts a half inch torque wrench so that we can more accurately drive the uh, differential into the breakaway torque region. Okay? These were nice, uh, simple, mild steel plates. Designed them up at send, cut, send, sent it off. They come back real easy, real cheap. Highly recommended. That's a tip, by the way, from Superfast Matt. Covers tight. Let's see how much breakaway torque there is. For these units, we expect to have a breakaway torque of about 80 to 100 Newton meters, which is roughly 50 to 75 foot-pounds. And this one's coming in right now, right between 50 to 75 foot-pounds. So this is well-tuned with the old Belleville washers or the originals, not with the more pronounced uh, new ones from the kit. Okay, so that worked out for this particular unit. Now that we've tested the breakaway torque of the differential carrier, uh, friction discs. 
We can now put this unit back into the OEM uh, differential housing. Now, this unit, we haven't changed it dimensionally, so the races and the shims that were removed should be able to be placed right back in the same location, in the housing and in the cover. Uh, and hopefully we can test that by checking the backlash of the unit when it's reinstalled with the ring gear on. Okay? But uh, otherwise, that should be good. We've tested this unit. It's uh, good to go. It does have the upgraded ceramic and molybdenum friction plates, which we found to be probably much better than the original equipment, which had the carbon fiber friction disc, which simply fell off. Uh, so this should give many more years of good service. All right, so there you go. That concludes this video on the rebuild of a Jaguar F-Type V6S model, original equipment manufacturer limited slip friction differential. Hope you like the content, <laughs> and remember, drive well, my friends.